All right, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Hive Swap Friendsim for the third time, in which I play Hive Swap Friendsim for the third time, and as opposed to doing it by myself or while sending photos to a friend, I'm making a commentary YouTube series because who doesn't make a commentary YouTube series these days? Uh, as per usual, expect spoilers for this game, Best Request, Homestuck Proper. Probably a Homestuck fanfic or two if I get my information confused. I haven't read the epilogues or Homestuck 2, so if I say something that's accidentally a spoiler, my bad. But you've been warned. Today, I'm pretty sure, is Amicia's route. So, yes, there she is. So let's make a new friend. You stumble through the streets of a strange alien world. Ever since you crash landed on this hostile planet, you have been desperate. Desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly for a bit of medical attention. Along the way, you've had some laughs, embarrassing missteps, maybe even an encounter with alien meat products. You don't really want to get into it. What do you want what you do want to get into is friendship. An entire planet of endless friend opportunities awaits you. Honestly, at this point you'd make friends with one of those weird popo bushes. You're not picky. Wait, you see something in the distance. Or perhaps someone. It's a baby. It's a baby. Lo, what light through yonder weirdly organic architecture breaks? A small figure approaches. Oh. Oh my gosh. You are so... So far, you've swallowed quite a few insults in regards to your looks and intelligence level. You aren't really the type to let shallow opinions of others get you down, but it's been kind of a rough day. You brace yourself. Cute! Oh. Oh! She gives you a sweet, sincere smile. Can I just say I love her eyebrows? I don't know why. I just think they're fun. I've never seen anything like you! It's giving me all sorts of new ideas. Boy, do you hope some of those ideas are about friendship? Now that you've got a taste of it, you are hungry for more. You take a stumbling step forward, and your ribs remind you that although the potential of cam camaraderie is enough to improve your mental health, it can't cure acute injuries. Oh, you don't look so good. Come inside! I've been looking for a new contributor. Contributors? Contributors? Could she mean... Friendship compute contributors? No, that's dumb. I think I said that word right wrong three times. Maybe she runs some sort of alien newspaper and she wants you on staff. She looks a little young for that, but what the heck do you know about alien management hierarchy? You follow her to a nearby building, and now that you're looking up from your ravenous hunt for companionship, you notice that you've wandered into kind of an upscale part of town. There's a lot less garbage and people collapsed in the street. You see, one of those spike robot things, but it's washing a window instead of shooting a laser at a group of children. That's not high class. You don't know what is. <laughs> Alternia. It really does- yeah, you know, it really do be like that. Before you can follow her inside, she turns around in the threshold, blocking your way. Real quick. You don't happen to be an artist, do you? Artistry? Well, as a matter of fact, I think I remember the bad ending. So tell her, yeah, it isn't exactly your whole deal, but you've been known to dabble. Oh, I see how it is. Well, you aren't going to sneak rodent any trade secrets out of me. Goodbye. We completely blew it. Completely. You're being flipped off by a 12 year old. Is she 12? I don't remember. I don't think the wiki says. Now the magic of autosave. It's just so weird. You have to put your cursor like down here. Who knows. So instead, we're gonna tell her no, you've never had much of a knack for it. Oh good. Friendships between artists can be so fraught. Much better just keep things between artists and our depreciators. That way no one can get jealous. The girl's smile widens even further, and you have feel an unbelievable rush of joy. Have you finally found someone who isn't a total fucking maniac? 
Spoiler, no. She still is. She's just small. And she brought up friendship without you having to mention it at all. It puts a spring in your step. Or as much of a spring as possible with a broken arm and misaligned torso. Amizia leads you into an elevator with buttons labeled in spiky letters that make absolutely no sense to you. You realize that probably nothing is ever going to make sense to you again. That's okay. Your hierarchy of needs has adjusted recently. That's just reading Homestuck. You're like, nothing is ever going to make sense again, but, you know, I guess that's fine. Your new friend, you are jumping the gun with this descriptor, but you're feeling seriously good about this encounter, stands in the corner of the elevator, wringing her claws. I wish I'd known I was going to have company. I would have cleaned up a little. It's been a while since I've met anyone new. You assure her that whatever disaster her house is it, whatever, whatever disaster her house is, it can't be any worse than some of the other places you've seen here. Although, you kind of get what she means. She's wearing an artist's mock that's covered in splashes of paint paint in quotations. Actually, it doesn't really look like paint, but it couldn't be anything else, could it? It's every color of the rainbow. The elevator door slides open and you step into a space that you are relieved to find. It's totally recognizable. Let's look around this space, shall we? Love this little... This is a little terrifying. I mean, I know she's an indigo. It comes with implications. But also, I don't know, I think something about just having cerulean blood is terrifying. Because they're terrifying, and so overpowering the cerulean is just like, ooh. A table overflows with messy palettes and brushes, cloudy jars of water, and sponges. Several easels stand beside the window to catch the light of the two moons, and a number of canvases lean against the wall, turned so you can't see what's on them. First things first! Amizia brings you over to a wall screen that looks way more high-tech than anything you have on your now-defunct spaceship, tapping away at a series of unreadable symbols. She then indicates that you should take off your sling. Here. Go ahead and stick it in there! She seems to want you to put your injured arm in the large hole in the wall, which you do because you are sure your new friend has your best interests at heart. The hole shrinks down like a blood pressure cuff, sending bolts of agony through you. You want to yank your, bro your arm back out, but you don't. Even if it's broken, you still like having it attached to you, and since you shout a lot and thrash your other limbs around. Calm down, you big wriggler. It's like you've never seen a medicalizer before. If you don't stop moving, it won't work. Tears spill down your cheeks, but you force yourself still. You'll bear the pain. You'll do it for your friend. She's looking at you so hopefully, and she's so delicate and pretty, almost angelic. You look at her face and tell yourself it's all going to be okay. Finally, the hole releases you, and you pull your arm back out to find it completely healed. You can move your fingers. It doesn't even hurt anymore. Hey, things are looking up. See? I told you! This is great! You're overwhelmed with the urge to celebrate. I think... I think this is the bad ending, so we're gonna be chill about it. You think Amnesia profusely, but you manage to keep it to the strictly verbal sort. Medical lectures are great! This part of the city is great! You really need to get more rich friends. You tell her this, throwing in a compliment of her studio while you're at it. See? This friendship stuff is easy. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. You are obviously really strained and under-socialized, but you don't seem to be a complete cultural idiot. Plus, I think it's really endearing how helpless and trusting you are. You laugh, slightly unnerved. You want to take that as a compliment, but after a recent encounter with another girl in blue, well, it all ended up okay. And Amicia is so nice and friendly, and she keeps calling you cute, which you think is pretty generous of her, considering what a disgusting mess you are at this point. Speaking of low bloods, what's your blood color? Just out of curiosity. Blood color? You aren't really sure what she's talking about, but red? You tell her it's red. She looks a little disappointed. I've got plenty of burgundy. Oh well. Good thing I have a delivery coming soon. Hey, do you think you can help me set up a few things up before they get here? They? 
Visitors? As in plural? As in multiple potential friends? Oh hell yes. You're all over that, especially considering your newly haired arm. You're anxious to display all the simple motor functions you can perform. Amnesia gives you another radiant smile. You live for those smiles, man. They're just so full of the glowing nectar of bromance. Perfect! Let's do this. Work is all work always goes faster with two pairs of hands, after all. Yes, absolutely it does. And even by that, she seems to mean her hands are pointing while she tells you where to put things. We're totally fine with that. Your ribs are still kind of killing you, but you swallow down the pain. You're getting pretty good at that. Too bad you can't stick your whole torso, torso into that magical science fiction hole in the wall. Well, maybe you could, but not right now. Right now, you've got a friend to help. Amnesia instructs you to clear all the furniture at the edges of the room and lay down a big purple tarp. Apparently, tarps aren't blue on this planet. Amnesia answers her phone, then buzzes open the apartment door. She runs over to the elevator with a squeal of delight. Surprised she doesn't take out Cahoot's eye uh, eyes with those horns, I'm just realizing. She's got little arrows on her head. She goes pew pew. Gut punch you. And take out your internal organs and then collect your blood for paint. They're here! Sorry, I'm getting so giggly about this. It's just been a while since I've had any new paints. Wait, paints? That's what's coming? Now that you think about it, there is something pretty crucial missing from this whole artist synthetic she's got on out here. There aren't any paints. No tubes dribbling color or pots with their tops left partially unscrewed. There aren't even any pencils. The elevator opens and two trolls come in. They have pretty similar shaped horns and are almost the exact same height. Brothers? Do trolls have brothers? From their uniforms and the douchey, swaggering way they walk, you get the idea that they are some sort of law enforcement. That and the third troll in handcuffs they are dragging between them. Thank you guys! You always bring me the best materials. They don't say anything. They just bring the third troll to the center of the tarp and force them into a kneeling position. Then they bow to Amnesia and leave the way they came. This doesn't look great. Even before, Amnesia runs out of the room and comes back with an axe the size of her whole body. You are not loving this. Sorry, I, I, now that I've mentioned my D&D character, I feel like I can talk about them more. They fucking love axes and they absolutely would have robbed Amnesia, but like on accident. Fun fact, accidentally commits crimes. The troll in the tarp trembles and bikes back a sob, but they don't say anything or try to run. She isn't really going to do what it looks like, is she? You can't bring yourself to believe that this cute little alien girl is going to straight up axe murder a dude right in front of you, presumably to finger paint with their blood. You stab her something to this effect. Amicia laughs. Well, you don't use my fingers. I'm not a fucking animal. She considers you for a few moments, tapping a claw against her mouth. I know. You can help me. I only ever let one other person help with my work. And she's out of town right now. But you and I have a connection. You feel it too. Right? You do. God, you do. You've been feeling it so much lately. For everyone you meet. You thought you had maybe come across some someone who would readily accept your platonic longings first, with longings without putting you through ringer first. You do want to help me, don't you? You do. You want that more than anything. Amicia looks at you solemnly. Why don't you do the honors? She holds out her axe. I wouldn't offer this to just anyone. But I can tell how special you are. You're trembling. The troll in the tarp is also trembling, but unlike you, they seem to have accepted their fate. Slowly, inevitably, you hold out your hand for the axe. Amisa gives it to you with a smile. God damn it, you forgot about your broken ribs, and that you're a human and can't just pick up gigantic fucking axes with one hand. You drop it and it bounces away from you, like, way more than you think an axe should probably bounce. You look up at Amicia from where you are doubled over with pain and shame. She laughs and scampers over to retrieve the axe, once again swinging it up without any signs of strain. She doesn't even have any visible muscles. What is this girl made out of? Indigo. She's made out of indigo. Don't mind me taking a drink. 
How silly of me! You seem so culturally advanced that for a second I forgot about your natural inferiority. Here, I'll give you a second chance. You nod. Yes, please. A second chance that does not include committing gruesome murder. Usually, I just use chains. But, I've got a better idea. Oh. Oh god. You get what she wants you to do. You hesitate, and Amicia's smile gets even sweeter. Sweet, like poison. Oh? You don't want to help me? The tarp crinkles underneath you as you kneel. You grasp the troll's shoulders and mumble an apology. They continue to say nothing. Amicia is sharpening her axe, which already looks pretty damn sharp. Hold on tight. You try. You really do. The problem is, you try to hold on tight, but at the same time, you try to drag the troll out of the way, some buried instinct to preserve, to try to preserve life rising up inside you. You're weak and injured, though, so all you end up doing is just flubbing both of you a little to the side. Splash, we're covered in blood again. Congrats, everyone, we've made it to instance two. Instead of coming down on the neck in a clean slice, Amicia's axe glances off the troll's collarbone, mortally wounding them instead of killing them outright. And now you know why they have not been begging for their life. They do not have a tongue, so they can't beg, but they sure can yell and thrash and bleed olive green alien blood all over you in the tarp. God, there's so much blood. It's just spurting everywhere. Here's, an, here's another fun headcanon time, like we had last episode. I don't remember how I arrived at this conclusion, but I've decided that trolls have open circulatory systems, and who's gonna tell me no? Hussy? He has no power here. Jesus Christ, you are such an idiot. Why couldn't you just commit? Now you're covered in a dying alien, and so is everything else. Amicia, the work table, and most direly, the canvas is leaning against the wall. Amicia takes one look at them and lets out a wail of rage. I can't believe this! I let you into my hive, into my life. I was planning to let you into my pusher, but I thought you were right sophisticated. But now I see you're just a philistine. She gives you a shove toward the elevator. Your ribs are screaming, and so is the bleeding troll. You try to babble an explanation. Forget it. I don't want to hear your excuses. Go who's right. If you want someone killed right, you have to kill them yourselves. You ride the elevator back down, kneeling in a pool of blood and failure. You're terrible at murder. <laughs> you know, that's just how it is on Alternia. You just you gotta get good at murder, or you your skill set is extremely low. Should have used your ass. So instead, we're gonna get excited and dance your new friend around the room. You try to resist the urge to celebrate. You fail to resist the urge. Um, you take Amicia by her tiny hands and twirl her around the studio. Or you try to. You forgot about your busted ribs. You sure are doing that a lot. You let go of Amicia and go careening into the tables. Into one of the tables. Thankfully, not the one covered in art supplies. You hit the corner and go down on your already incredibly sore ass. This is what you get for acting like a huge fucking tool in front of your new friend. Are you okay? Was that sort of ritualistic rite of healing I've never heard of before? You shrug against the floor. Amicia leaves down and picks you up in a bridal carry, despite the fact that she's about half your size. Makes your rib hurts. What does it nowadays? Amicia lays you down on a weird lumpy couch. Are you sure you're okay? You look a little... She trails off to nothing. She's looking at your left arm, which you sort, which you have draped over yourself awkwardly to sort of try to hold your torso together. That color. At first, she thinks she you think she means the color of your skin, which is different than her light gray. Then you think she means the truly fantastic of the truly fantastic buffet of bruises you got going on. But then you realize that in your prancing idiocy, you've managed to scrape up the inside of your arm. Blood oozes sluggishly from the wound. Amicia dredges her finger through it. You're half expecting her to put it in her mouth and for this to become a whole cannibal situation. Well, since you're not the same species, it wouldn't really be cannibalism. But still, no thanks. Instead, Amicia just holds her finger up, the drop of blood trembling on the tip. 
this color. I've never seen anything like it. She is adorable. I do think she's adorable. I would say one of the only valid high bloods, but that would go against uh, fuck the high bloods. I just think she's cute. I think both. I think all the. Wow. Her and Wan Shi, I think, are really cute. I can't remember the teal, the little teal's name right now at the top of my head, but she just makes me uncomfortable because of the meme propaganda. She, okay, she dashes off to one of her tables, pulling down, pulling over a sketchbook and dragging her finger down it. Your blood paints a little, a rusty line down the center. She lets out a little squeak of excitement. This is amazing. What, red? Not red. There's a million dirty resties swarming all over the city. I'm drowning in red. This is crimson. It's incredible. You must be some sort of mutant. You're really lucky I found you instead of one of the drones. Lucky? You? <laughs> yes. Very lucky. The luckiest. Though your arm is healed and you're out of whatever doubtlessly weird weather happens on this planet. Maybe Amicia is right. Maybe you are lucky. You close your eyes and try to breathe. Zen yourself out. At least send to yourself and your own body and all that garbage. Then you open your eyes and wow, you sure aren't centered anymore! In fact, you roll completely to the left as you try to get away from Amicia, who is back and standing over you with a giant axe. Watch out! Amicia grabs you, drags you back up onto the couch, and plants her hand on, on your solar plexus, effectively pinning you down. You'll hurt yourself if you keep flopping around like a bleach of lover beast. Do you want to be friends, don't you? You want to help me with my artistic aspirations, right? You get the feeling that she might be trying to manipulate you. Just the tiniest suspicion. It's possible Amicia has recognized your intense craving for companionship and is trying to exploit it. You don't like being suspicious of a new friend. But that is a pretty big axe. I don't know what's got you so worried. I just want to show you my axe. Oh, of course. <laughs> Makes sense. It is a really nice axe. You hold out your hand for it, but of course it is too heavy for you, and your hands are all sweaty, and you fumble it. Fumble? The really sharp weapon. Amicia tries to catch it before it's too late, and somehow in all the regular struggle you end up getting cut. Like, very cut across both of your wrists? In fact, you don't think she could have aimed even better if she'd been trying. I forgot the blood slowly fades in. Oh. Oh dear. Hard agree. Don't struggle. You'll only hurt yourself more, silly. You don't want that, do you? No. You definitely don't want that. Not after a, what a Butterfingers you've proven to be. Amisa gets up to put her axe down and you kind of lose track of her for a little while. You're bleeding all over her couch and everything around you starts to go shiny and unreal. She comes back with a couple little jars that she uses to catch her blood. That's a good idea. You sure are making a mess. You wonder if they're specifically blood jars. They look like jam jars. Alien jam. Space jam. God, you love that movie. It's been so long since you've seen it. Definitely the best PG movie about basketball. Way better than the one about with the dog and the clown. Do they even have basketball here? Yes, Gamicia. She just shushes you and brushes your hair back off your forehead. She keeps smiling and saying comforting things. God, she's such a good friend. Before too long, you do what it's honestly a goddamn shock you haven't done before now. You pass out. When you come to, you are propped up against the wall in a weird way that wouldn't that you wouldn't love even if you weren't an invalid, and both of your arms are jammed into the hole in the wall. The med hole. The gloria hole of well-being. The magic sphincter. You grunt and pull your arms back out. They're healed. The cuts on your wrists are just two faded pink lines. You take a step away from the wall and immediately hit the ground. You may not be actively dying anymore, but you did just lose like half the blood in your body. Gosh, you're tired. A little giggle makes you turn around, or 
roll over since you're still on the floor and probably not getting up anytime soon. It's fine. You've met worse floors in your life. Amicia is sitting on one of her, at one of her easels, her hair pulled back beneath a scarf and her little round glasses perched on her nose. A jar of your blood sticks next to you, and as you watch, she dips a brush in. I'm glad you're awake! I was a little worried I'd actually killed you back there! She laughs and you laugh along with her. It's very funny. Actually, everything is funny right now. It's probably the blood loss. You ask what she's painting. You, of course! You inspired me! Hmm. Well, right now, it just looks like a bunch of red squiggles and some lines. But she only just got started. She's warming up. She sits there on her stool, looking at her palette and chewing on her lip thoughtfully. She looks somewhat nervous. Actually, I want to show you something. Something I've never shown to anyone else. She leaps up from her stool and crosses the studio. You roll to your other side to keep her in your line of sight. Really hope she isn't getting another space jam jar. She starts turning around the canvases one by one. They are all blank. Except for one, which has a, sing which has a little- wait, no, that's just shadow. Every single one of them is blank. You aren't sure you understand. You ask her if these were all just new canvases that she has not gotten the chance to paint on yet. Amicia sighs. No. I've had them for forever. I'm just... Not a real painter. There. I said it. She buries her face in her hands, talking from between her fingers. I'm really good at all the other parts. The materials and the studio. I can even make all my own paints. I just can never do the actual sitting down doing art part. She looks so despondent. You wish you could do something, but you don't really know that much about art. And you probably can't stand up yet. You tell her that she looks like she's moving in the right direction at least. You don't even have a studio or any brushes or stuff like that. Of course, you have no aspirations to being a painter, but you leave that part out. A good plan. She could probably eat you. That's just it! I feel inspired for the first time ever! I think it must has to be your messed up, disgusting mutant blood. There's really no other explanation. She takes a knee beside you, picking up one of your limp hands with hers. They are cold, like she's been pressing them to a glass window in the winter. I forgot high bloods are super cold. They would not be fun to cuddle with. Usually I just finish off my contributors quickly. I don't have time to deal with a bunch of injured low bloods moaning around my studio. But I couldn't just use all of your blood up at once. You are far too special for that. Because Carcat's not going to be bored for who knows how long. You gaze at Amicia. A mist has descended over your vision, and it isn't even the mist of imminent death. I have to keep this precious blood safe. I think you might be my muse. You will never escape! At least the heart's cute. It's got a little heart here. I love... When she and Amicia are just so cute. Because you're like, you're just a baby. And one of you does a lot more murder than the other. But like, she's still baby. Alright, well that was episode 3. We made friends with Amicia. First small troll. First high blood. Well, I guess Cerulean's are technically mid blood. So first high blood we've met. Had a good time. Good in quotation marks. Because we did almost get murdered. But hey, it was a good time. I'll see you guys in the next video where I believe. Oh, fuck yeah, Moisture Wave Time. It's one of my favorite songs in the soundtrack. And even though the music's turned down, you'll still, we'll still vibe to it for a little bit. So, bye!